everyone. Welcome back to our Bible lessons. We've been studying the life of Christ, and we're finding these lessons in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament. They're called the Gospels, the good news they tell about Jesus. Well, in today's lesson, Jesus and his disciples are trying to get away from the city. They've been crowded all day long. People have been coming to see Jesus, and they need to get away for a while. So Jesus said, let's go to a quiet place and rest. And so they got into a boat and went across a lake, and they were going to rest, and they were really enjoying it. This time there wasn't a storm, and it was quiet, and it was wonderful out on the lake. It was peaceful. And the only sound was their voices and the flapping of the sails and the slapping of the water against the sides of the boat. And the disciples were finally able to begin to rest. And they were happy to be alone with the Lord Jesus. You see, as Jesus has been healing more and more people, and as he has been doing more and more miracles, everyone wants to be with him and to ask him questions and to learn from him and to have their loved ones healed. Well, even now, their plan to get away wasn't working. Because you see, this lake was like on a hills were all around it and the people could see them out on the lake. And they began to come out of the cities and they began to run, the Bible even says, to find they want to get where Jesus is going to land with the boat. So by the time Jesus and his disciples landed with their boat, there were crowds of people. Many, 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 many people. Oh my, they were wanting to get away. The shoreline was just crowded. Well, what do you think Jesus is going to do? These people all want to hear him teach. They want to have him heal their loved ones. But they were trying to get away to rest. Now, surely he could just say to the noisy crowd, please go home. I am tired and we need to rest. But he didn't. <laughs> he looked at the crowds of people the young and the old and the men and the women and the boys and the girls. And he looked on them with great love. And <clears throat> he didn't send them away. He looked at them as they were sheep without a shepherd. And so he wanted to help them because he loves them. Did you know that he loves you too? I am so glad that Jesus loves us. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. You know, I have a lot of elderly people who listen to these stories. They're not just for kids. And I have the cool version for the elderly people on Jesus Loves Me. Let me get it close enough so you'll be able to see the words. Jesus loves me, this I know. Though my hair is white as snow, though my sight is growing dim, still he bids me trust in him. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Though my steps are oh so slow, with my hand in his I'll go. On through life, let come what may, he'll be there to lead the way. 
When the nights are dark and long, in my heart he puts a song, telling me in words so clear, have no fear, for I am near. When my work on earth is done, and life's victories have been won, he will take me home above, then I'll understand his love. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Well, Jesus is not going to send them away because he loves them and he want to help them. Well, he began to answer the questions lovingly and tenderly, and he healed the sick. And the day went on, the hours went on quickly, and before they knew it, evening had come. And the people were tired and hungry and far from home. Well, Jesus, hurrying to, the, to Jesus, the disciples, said to Jesus, we, we need to send these people home. They, they need to go home. They're hungry. You've been working all day. Send the people away that they may go into the villages and buy food. Then Jesus said something surprising. He said, they do not need to go away. You feed them. See, the people had come in such a rush that they hadn't packed lunches. And they were hungry. And the disciples looked at each other in surprise. They thought, we should feed the multitude of people? How? There's nothing here but grass and sand and stone. And then turning to Philip, one of the disciples, Jesus said, where are we going to buy bread so that these people may eat? Jesus was testing Philip's faith. Jesus knew very well what he was about to do. Jesus is God and he knows all things. Philip looked at the multitude of people and he said, well, he's trying to figure it out in his head. He thought, this is hopeless. We cannot buy bread for this group. Two hundred dollars worth of bread wouldn't be enough for even any of them to have one little piece of bread. That's what Philip came up with. Well, how much food do we have here? Jesus said, go and see. And then Andrew came up and he said to Jesus, we have a little boy here who has his lunch. And he has five barley loaves and two fishes. He said, but that wouldn't be enough. What are they among so many? You know, they're, that little boy's lunch, we're going to find out, and you probably already know, fed all those people. And there's another little chorus that says, I don't know if you can see it in there. Let me turn this light around, maybe there. It says, little is much when God is in it. And it goes, little is much. When God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown, and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Little is much when God is in it. He can take what little things we have and use it. Well, this little boy was excited to give his lunch to Jesus. Well, Jesus lovingly did not say a cross word to his disciples for their unbelief. And in a quiet voice, he said, bring the loaves and fishes to me. What was Jesus going to do with these little boys' food? And the little boy brought to Jesus his lunch, and he gladly gave him his food. Wow, would you? And then Jesus told them he wanted to have them make everybody sit down. There he's got the lunch. 
And everybody's supposed to sit down in groups, groups of 150, so that they could be organized. Jesus was a very organized person, you will see. So these people sat down in the groups like Jesus told them to. And then Jesus took the little boy's lunch and he looked up into heaven and he began to pray. Wow. It says he thanked God for the food. Do you thank God for your food when you eat? I hope you do because it's only from God that we get the energy to work and to make money to buy food. You know, there were times when God, we didn't have the money to buy food and God brought us food right to our door. He supplied. There's a verse that says, give us this day your, your daily bread. And God would do that for us. Well, then he took the food and he blessed it. I'm forgetting to show you the pictures. This is where he's talking to Philip about how can they feed the people. And then he brought the little boy and his lunch. And then he prayed and then he put the food in baskets and handed it to the disciples. And they went and handed it to the people. He broke the five barley loaves of bread and two fishes into pieces and gave some to one of the disciples. And then he put the food into the baskets and then they passed it on to the people. Wow, not only did God use the little boy's food, but he used the disciples to carry the food to the hungry people. The Lord Jesus wants to use us, all of us who have believed in him, to carry his word to people who have not heard and to serve him. Well, then the disciples came to the first row of people that they handed the small basket and the first man took some bread and fish out and passed it to the next person and they took some bread and fish out and every time what was happening is that there was just as much food in the basket when they took it from the hands of Jesus. No matter how much food the people took out, there was still more food in each basket. This was a miracle. The multitude of people sitting on the ground had never seen anything like this. The disciples could hardly believe what they saw. Here they were, handing out the food to the people. And the baskets were still full. They kept handing them out. And then the Bible says that they all ate and they were all full. And then Jesus said something important. Gather up the broken pieces of food that are left so that nothing will be lost or wasted. And the disciples came back and you know how many basketfuls they had left over? The Bible says there were 12 basketfuls left over. The Lord doesn't want us to waste our food. He doesn't want us to waste anything that he gives us. We want to be careful, don't we? It was important. He made that statement. Wow. And the people began to talk excitingly. And the people said, This man surely must be the prophet that God has promised to send into the world. Well, the next day, back in the city of Capernaum, Jesus said something to the people. He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he told the people, he said, what does Jesus mean by that? Well, we need bread in order to live. We need food, don't we? If we don't eat food, we're not going to live. We're going to die. And our soul, the part of us inside of us that lives forever, needs Jesus. If we don't have Jesus, then we will die. Our soul will die. And we won't get to go to heaven one day. 
but Jesus came to be the bread of life for our soul. So that if we'll believe in him, we will get to go to heaven one day. You see, Jesus, just like he took that bread in the baskets and broke it up, he was broken for us when they put him on the cross. He had to die for us. That's why he came. He came to take away our sins. And only he could do that. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, he would say. And he had to be broken. As the bread was broken and given out that day, he was broken for us when he died on the cross. And we need to take him as our Savior. God's word says that if we'll take this bread of life, Jesus, if we will take him, then we'll get to live forever in heaven. Well, what do I mean take him? And what do we mean the bread of life? We're just comparing the bread that we need to eat to live to Jesus, who we need as our Savior to be able to live eternally forever in heaven. Jesus, he is the only one who can take away our sin. Do you know that you're a sinner? All have sinned, the Bible says. That's what I knew the night that I asked Jesus to save me. I saw my sin, and I knew Jesus wasn't happy with my sin. And I needed to ask him to forgive me and to take it away. Now, we can say a prayer right now. If you'd like to do that, if you'd like to know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die, and that you've received Jesus as your Savior, you can pray after me. But this isn't a just one, two, three, pray after me. When you'll be talking, you'll be talking to God from your heart. So this is what the things you would need to pray so that you could know your soul had everlasting life. You would say, Dear God, I want to ask you to be my Savior. I know you're the bread of life. <clears throat> and Lord, I know I have sinned. I've done wrong things that don't please you. And I ask you to forgive me and help me to stop and turn from them. And Lord, I know that you died on the cross and you shed your blood to forgive my sin. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me and to save me. Lord, I know that you were buried. You took my sins and buried them. And then you rose again so that we can know for sure we're on our way to heaven. You came alive again and you're in heaven waiting for us to come too. But not everybody gets to go, just those who have believed in you. So Lord, I want to say that I believe in you now and I ask you to take my soul to heaven when I die. You know, if you prayed that, that's just wonderful. Because you can know. That's why Jesus came. We just got done with Christmas where Jesus was born and he left heaven to come down here so you and I could go to heaven one day. I hope you made that decision. Oh, how wonderful that would be. But you know, I want to ask you a question. I want to think about this little boy who gave his lunch to Jesus to help feed all those people. It wasn't much, but he was willing and gave it gladly. Jesus performed a miracle with it. You know, are you willing to give to Jesus what you have? Perhaps it's just a little, but think what God could do with it. He wants you most of all, though. He wants you to believe in him. Well, the Lord can use you to take the gospel message of Jesus, the bread of life, and tell others, other boys and girls and men and women who are hungry to know him and to be sure that someday they'll go to heaven. We need to look for ways to serve the Lord. My devotions the other day said I should ask the Lord for someone to tell the gospel to. Let's look for ways. Boys and girls with one accord, look for ways to please the Lord. Find some helpful deed to do, 
that will make him happy too. I'll do it all for Jesus. I'll do it all for Jesus. I'll do it all for Jesus. He did so much for me. Yeah, what did he do? He died on the cross, left his home in heaven, and came down because he loves us.